Hey guys, how's it going? It is Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. So today is the first day that I have not felt like uh, fish poo-poo. Um, I uh, have had the flu and bronchitis uh, is what it turned out. I went and got tested for the, the dreaded Voldemort disease we can't say on YouTube. Um, how's it going, Pete? Uh, isolation is fine. I mean, I get bored and I paint my nails and I do my wife's toenails and start drawing things and, you know, all sorts of odd, bored things. Start, you know, playing games like throwing a pencil into a cup from across the room. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Goose Not Maverick, how's it going? DMC Productions, what's up? Uh, Chevy Fish, Muppet, uh, let's see, Sherry, how's it going? Uh, do, 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 just checking things out. Uh, oh, female beta to their respected. Uh, yeah, betas will be up on each other. In fact, I am gonna have to, I'm gonna have to deal with it. I don't know why I said it that way. I'm gonna have to deal with that. I've got a 20 long full of inch long bettas right now. Uh, I think there's like 40 of them, so yeah. Uh, Dwarf Rainbows and Buenos Aires Tetras. Um, neon or Cardinals, never kept them all in your years, huh? I really like green neon Tetras. They're, they're probably my favorite of that kind. Uh, they still look blue to most people, but they have a turquoise glare from a certain angle, and they seem to be healthier in my experience. Uh, neons and cardinals are beautiful. Rich Rainbow, are you thinking of? Um, hey, what's up, Ian? Uh, Karen, hello. Lady Aquatics, Kimberly, hello. Steven, uh, yeah, so we're all, we're all joining in here, and so waiting a little bit for everyone to hop on in right now i'm in my carport it's a beautiful day in seattle washington ginger what is up my dear um oh you're always driving home man you just must be in a perpetual state of driving home uh i heard i mean it's been a while now but i meant to uh i think i dropped you a dm but uh i hope your side of town wasn't the one that got hit by the tornado in Nashville. Uh, man, tornadoes and Idaho got an earthquake and Utah got an earthquake. You get an earthquake and you get an earthquake. Uh, Luis Silguera, hello. Aqua Balls, hello. Um, so today I was thinking we'd talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, first of all. Um, Carlos Campos, hello. Um, it is tubbing season coming soon, which is kind of exciting. But I was going to talk about Mark Von Wisco. No, I'm, uh, that's not what I was going to talk about. Um, but uh, I was going to talk about small fish that have a big personality or interesting personalities, interesting social behaviors, uh, things like that. And um, that was kind of going to be the, I don't know, focus of the chat today. Um, and if you guys want to talk about other stuff, we can answer other questions. So that's the thing. I mean, we can go inside and check out the fish and all that, but it just felt so nice, uh, so nice outside and it's just so relaxing here. My neighbors are smoking some, some pork or something. It smells really good. Uh, it's sunny. It's almost, I think it's almost 70 degrees here at the end of the day in Seattle. So, yeah. Um, let's really quickly talk about uh, wind tubbing. Um, I have a total mess of aquariums. Some of them I was cleaning out. I bleached and then filled with water to make sure they're still holding water. Hold on. Clearly, there's something on the camera lens. That's a little better. Um, so we've got this aquarium, that aquarium, this aquarium full of spray paint cans, 
And then these, this is white worms, the, uh, uh, mosquito larvae under there. This is Daphnia. This is Daphnia and Infusoria. So uh, these tanks, I'll probably move to the front porch. And last year I did Danios in here. I did uh, Stripe Danios. Um, yeah. See, he's got a Traeger. I'm so jealous. I wish I had one. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking in here this year, I might do white cloud minnows. I've done that in years past. Uh, I might do the rice fish also. All those can withstand cooler temperatures and uh, they don't need a filter or um, heater once it's a certain temperature outside. If you put plants in, especially if you get plants to cover the top, it really gets, uh, it holds the heat in really well overnight, especially up against the house here. And then um, we've got a big uh, outlet here that pushes out all the drier air and stuff like that when, when we run our laundry. Um, Ian Atkins says, I have a golden wonder killie with my Bisher and the Killy tried to pair up with the Bisher and follows it everywhere. It's a Juvie and oh, the Bisher is a Juvie. Yeah, I would hope so. And the Killy is a sub adult. I don't know. I mean, I wish they could interbreed, but uh, they can't. But yeah, there's some funny things. I've seen uh, male live bears try to pair up with just about everything you can imagine um cichlids 23 uh says i'm trying to get a pisto uh Borelli blue to breed dude from the local fish store says they only breed in short tanks like 12 inch to 14 inch tall mine's a 29 thoughts uh, just lower the water i don't know if that's true though i don't think that i think fish will spawn or breed in a lot of different conditions than what people say i think one consistency and as long as your fish are colorful they look happy um they're you know they've got like a vivid color to them they're active and then you're feeding them live food and then they've got a place to spawn however their preferred method of spawning is then i think that they're fine so um i have minnows outside it, buddy in a tub with plants no filter no water change but it's raining so that counts as water change yeah totally um i actually was thinking about getting some sticklebacks and local fish some sunfish maybe some pumpkin seed fish and breeding those as well so i don't know maybe i'll do that i haven't done that on the channel for sure i haven't done that since i was a kid really um, Steven Thompson, uh, you can always catch the replay, sir. Uh, I'm sorry you can't stare, stick around. I just thought I'd come outside because I've been cooped up inside for so long. Um, this is a little garden space that we have by our house here in Seattle. We're kind of packed in, so, um, we don't have a yard of our own other than that carport, that pathetic spot for fish. So, I just thought I'd show you guys that, like, Little fish with big personalities really appeal to me because I don't have a place for them. However, that being said, what's up, Goose Not Maverick um, and Kimberly? Um, uh, yes, Kimberly, pumpkin seed fish are small and beautiful, and they are very mean. But they're really cool to watch breed to spawn. Same with sticklebacks. Sticklebacks, I have a video showing them spawning from above. Uh in hot springs where they spawn all year in canada and uh it's it's really fascinating if you haven't seen that video go back and check out my stickleback videos uh they're really i i would even start this conversation off with sticklebacks because sticklebacks i mean first of all evolutionarily they they evolve like instantaneously what's up sand creek aquatics um instantaneously uh within a generation is what i mean they're <clears throat> sorry guys i'm still kind of sick uh they they are uh they'll evolve they'll uh they'll do all sorts of interesting things they change color 
Uh, they changed markings. They changed the number of spines. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is kind of my hobo, like, I've been at home beard, uh, I suppose. My vi virus beard. Uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, Pete, it's like uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit out here right now. It's kind of a nice surprise. This week's been pretty nice outside. Uh, the only thing is, I kind of want... If I have sticklebacks or pumpkin seed fish, I kind of want them inside, but they're best as a species tank, unless you have, like, 200-gallon tank or something, um, because they're just mean, I guess. I mean, most northwest cold-water fish are pretty aggressive in the Puget Sound area where I live. Uh, they have to deal with salmon and, uh, I don't know sea lions and all sorts of crazy things that that ruin their day um yes uh pygmy sunfish i love i've been trying to get a hold of pygmy sunfish that i would do inside now the cool thing about sticklebacks is so sticklebacks they they have these dens where they will um the males they'll pick a female they'll be like uh i want her and the females have this really odd shape they're shaped kind of like a, a frying pan. So they've got a big body and then their tail kind of sticks out like the handle of a frying pan. And uh, the ma the males are much smaller, much teenier and more streamlined like a, a tetra or a white cloud minnow or something like that. And the uh, male will dig a hole and he'll dig it so that it's it's kind of like this. If... if uh, if these lines behind me are, this is water up here, this is sand, they'll dig a hole, like a tunnel that's like a U-shaped. And then from the other axis, so coming this way, they'll dig a side tunnel. And they actually have witnessed now, in some cases, they'll take sticks. And they'll put sticks, so they've got the main tunnel here, and then the other tunnel coming, so it looks like an X if you had a bird's eye view. And then the tunnel that goes this way is only big enough for the male. That side tunnel that, that looks kind of like a T or an X. Sometimes it goes all the way through. But that means that there's this intersection in the center. And they put sticks and leaves and stuff in the center. And then they kick sand and uh, usually mud or sand over that. And then what they do is they anger the females so they anger the females by nipping their fins not enough to break them or anything but they nip the fins and the males start like going nuts they start nipping the fin and they have sized up which female they want and so within if you watch this going on from like a dock or um i don't know the the shore in like a shallow like cove on a lake or something you can actually see that each set has like three or four square feet or maybe 10 square feet it just depends on how many there are and you can see the little mound where they've made this little thing and there's two holes that are clearly visible and then that other hole that the male goes in is not super visible it's kind of disguised so the the main bigger hole they'll anger the female until she chases them in to the u-shaped tunnel well, they've tapered the tunnel exactly to her size, so they can slip through it, and she'll go running after him, trying to, like, eat him, and uh, as long as he's quicker, she gets stuck in that tunnel. She wedges herself in that tunnel, and then he swims out of that tunnel, swims around the side, and he nudges her belly with his nose, and that stimulates her eggs to drop. So her eggs drop in the tunnel, and she's wiggling and freaking out and trying to get out of the center of this little tunnel underground. And then he does his thing. He releases his uh, gametes, gametes, and uh, they fertilize in the center of this tunnel where this female's like flicking her fins around, and that's causing dirt to go around. It's causing the eggs to kind of get kicked around and tumbled. And then uh, what he does is he pulls the leaf matter off above her from the tunnel, from his side tunnel. 
and she's then able to go up through the top, like make her way out through the, the center of the sand. And she is out of there. And so her, her eggs are back there and the whole thing collapses. And so then now the male has this nest and he only has his side tunnel left. And then he just kind of hides in that for the rest of the the spawning process. So it's really kind of a, like those kind of uh, behaviors to me are really fascinating. And I wouldn't have ever thought to go watch sunfish or sticklebacks, little weird clear fish that aren't that interesting to me from the outside. But, you know, a lot of times it's fish that look just like your standard, I don't know, typical fish um that have some of the coolest behavior i mean everyone knows cichlids and bettas and you know stuff like that have cool behavior but there's a lot of uh indigenous fish that do also so i might do something like that for my pond uh fish dreams what's up uh tiffany how's it going uh let's see here akahina just got some Bloody Mary shrimp today. My first time trying shrimp. Well, good luck. Bloody Marys are a good one. They are one of the interesting shrimp lines because their flesh is actually uh, pigmented with red pigment. Uh, whereas, uh, whereas other species don't have that. They're clear, and when they die, they're clear. Whereas uh, a Bloody Mary, when it dies, will stay. it'll look pink uh, or red uh, for a while. Um, why do I have blue nail polish? Well, you know, when you stay home and you're with your wife and you've had the flu and you've been relegated to one bedroom for five days and I was sleeping like 18 hours a day, seriously, and then awake in the middle of the night, essentially, um, and just barely getting fish stuff done that I needed to. I'm still really dragging. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I got tested for the Voldemort, the, 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 the sickness we can't name on YouTube. Uh, so boredom, yeah, boredom. Uh, and just fun. I'm not going anywhere. I wear gloves when I do. Uh, I'm an artist. Uh, F y'all? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just like to do that. I mean, maybe I'll have a teardrop tattoo next time you see me. I am a tattoo artist, so, uh, I don't know if y'all know that, but if I've had some viewers that have done some super sleuthing either via Facebook or, uh, what, what's that place called? Oh, my old website that is now no longer around. Somehow people found the old pictures of me tattooing people and uh, stuff like that. So every once in a while, the internet is funny that way. Um, but yeah, I tattooed for a decade. So um, started by getting arrested. Um, well, okay, I didn't get arrested. I got stopped by the police for spray painting an abandoned building when I was 8, 19. And... It was the start of the Iraq war, and I said, I, I spray painted something like, Afghanistan is fair game, leave Iraq alone, millions will die, and Vietnam part two, or something, you know, college hippie-ish like that, which actually in retrospect, eh, I agree, that's kind of what happened, but um, I was caught spray painting that on this big empty building in our town, um, and I had some, like, kind of Banksy-looking stencils I'd put around, too, that they knew I was doing. And they were trying to find me because it's a small town, Bellingham, Washington. And uh, they got me, and they called down the owner of the warehouse, which I didn't... I thought it was condemned. It had is falling apart. Like, literally, it had collapsed in on one side, and you had to go down these railroad tracks to get to it. But you could see it from the freeway or the main, main highway. Um... And so I thought, oh, that'll be a great place to put a political message. Um, so I had done this thing and finished up, and my hands are covered in black, blue paint. And uh, they stopped me. They waited three or four hours until they found the owner of the place. And then they, uh, 
the owners were like, hey, um, we own a latte stand. Would you do the art for the latte stand and we'll drop the charges? We'll buy your paint. And so I said, sure. And so then I got asked to do another thing. And then the owner of the latte stand again was like, hey, I love your art. Like I showed him my sketch pads, doodle work. And they were like, hey, will you design a tattoo for me? Like, you know, like a back piece, like a whole big tattoo. And I was like, sure. And so for a while, I just somehow I put it on MySpace or whatever. This so Maybe it was Live Journal back then. I don't know. I put it on some social media. Angel Fire. That's what it was. Angel Fire websites. And um, I, I put it up that I had done these designs. And in a college town, word got around quickly. So I started doing all these other designs. And uh, pretty soon, the tattoo artists in town were like, Hey, dude, um, cool that you want to do tattoo-related stuff. But, like, we like doing our own designs. That's kind of why people come to us. And, like, we've had, like, six people. This one guy in particular, Paul, who, who uh, is half owner of a place called Old School. And uh, it's the, probably one of two main places in Bellingham, Washington. And, uh, yeah, the Screaming Trees are from Bellingham, partially. Uh, you could consider Def Cab for Cutie, Modest Mouse, um, Rilo Kiley, Sleater Kinney. All those bands went to Western. So they're from other parts like Seattle, Aberdeen, Sammamish, other towns in, within 100 miles of there. But a lot of bands, like the Postal Service, uh, that you've probably heard of, um, Blue Scholars, Macklemore used to play gigs up there all the time. He played house parties when I was th up there. Like, literally, we paid him in beer to come DJ and uh, MC a party. He wasn't even, like, the headliner. Like, he, we, some other guy that no one's ever heard of again was the big big name of the night at this big house party any case i'm getting off track from fish but that's what kind of got me into art and finally i was doing this for years while going to school and it was making enough money that it was my job so finally i went and i talked with paul who was like hey too much too much art like i don't want to translate your art into my style of art he did old traditional and i was doing kind of new wave new age um psychedelic kind of art or pop art i guess you'd call it and so he said um you know start your own shop basically and so i was like how do i do that you know and i, I thought i needed an apprenticeship and everything well he just said uh no buy yourself some gear online and practice and then come back in and talk to me when you know your way around the stuff so from there, I went and I got some tattoos done from him of my designs. And uh, he let me come and hang out in the shop for hours and just watch and learn. And uh, he wouldn't take me on as an apprentice. But pretty soon, at that time, you didn't need anything special to be a tattoo artist other than people willing to get tattoos. So I was like, all right, I'll be a tattoo artist. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. So that's how I got into it. That's why I've got, like, so the, the art I have about fish on Teespring, uh, on all the shirts and stuff, that's exactly the same way I do a tattoo stencil. So that's kind of where that style comes from, why I really like black and white lines, Sumi ink. So, enough of that, but for those of you who were listening, that was a nice sidetrack for six minutes or whatever. Okay, so back to Little Fish Big Personalities. We just talked about some native fish that are like that. But I'm thinking that perhaps we should talk about fish that everyone can access. Um, but I do think that both the... So there's really three main, and there's like six total. But there are pygmy sunfish, and there's the Gulf Coast one. There's the Okeechobee one, the Florida one. And then there's the... Um, the Okefenokee in, in Georgia one. And then there's the Carolina one. And they're all a variation of a little black fish or gray fish if they're females. And the, the, they'll be dark black and banded with blue stripes. 
some variation of that. But they're all really cool, and they're just like Battis. So Battis are from India, and they're usually red colorations, red and pink and that kind of stuff. Um, but they're, they, they behave very much like cichlids. So there's one alpha male, uh, they get a harem of females, and then they just kind of take off from there. Um, in fact, let's go take a look at my baddest because they're fun to watch. They, they move throughout the water column as the day goes on. So they move um, up and down. So at night, they will hunt for little worms and debris at the bottom of the tank. And in the day, they hang out underneath the top layer of the weeds if you have like some plants. So, let's see here. So they hang out like right here. Waiting, that's a female. No, no good color. And then the males are under here. But if I had to bet on it, there's probably one hanging out somewhere up here. There's, uh, that's another female. Just got chased away by, uh... I should have fed my fish before I streamed, guys. I'm sorry. Because when they haven't been fed, they're kind of little jerks. All right, so here's the males. And they're not that colored up right now. Um, but these are the red and black tiger baddis. They're not red. They're like magenta, like a beautiful magenta. But they'll usually hang out at this weird, like, 45-degree angle waiting for little bugs to come out of the, like, little, um, I don't know what you'd call them, uh, Daphnia, maybe? They're not quite Daphnia, like, seed shrimp, I guess. And then they get worked up, and they have little nests with the females, that's the big male, his fins are bigger, his underfins are darker and pointier. And then the other males are still colorful, which is what I like about red and black baddis. But they they get the females. They are the ones who get to mate, and only them. Um, so, let's see here. In the case of these baddis, I remember I told you guys that two weeks ago, the male died. Well, this one is probably going to take his place as the new male. Um, I knew that one of them would probably be a sneaker male. I think it's this one. Hold on. Let's see if we can get it to turn and have some color. Um, there's one that's getting blue finage, uh, underneath. Now, these are scarlet baddis here. And, uh, come on. Hello. They have another big personality. And there's about a dozen types of baddis and maybe six... That are known. See that one there? You can see that uh, she has yellow eggs in her belly. So she's ready to spawn. That's an adult female ready to spawn with those eggs, those yellow eggs in her belly. Uh, but as I've said, this is one of the fish that they've observed hermaphrodism. So uh, they start with both. Oh, there we go. That's going to be the new male right there, ladies and gentlemen. That will be the new male that will take over. So he's starting to color up. Uh, I don't know if it was born a male that was just not expressing any of its traits until the alpha male died. But it will color up, it will uh, bulk up, and it'll get big fins uh, just like the other male did. And you can tell that, you can even see the, the fins starting to kind of take shape. The, well if it doesn't swim away sorry guys i'm so zoomed in these things are so small you can see how small they are they're not even as long as my fingernails are wide um but yeah so they're in here um doing their thing the other thing that i have going on that i think you know they don't necessarily have quote unquote personality maybe they do i don't know shrimp so a mono shrimp are going to be your kind of uh aggressive like outgoing, uh, they just sit there and they're like, I don't give an F. Uh, whereas 
the uh, Neo Caradinas are a little more laid back, a little more chill. Um, this, these are my coal blue dream shrimp. I don't know why that one's in here. <laughs> Maybe I just decided that there needed to be like one good shrimp in with all the coal shrimp. But uh, another thing about these shrimp is uh, they're fun to watch eat. You know, if you watch them really closely, they're really fun to watch their little mouths move and stuff. So I definitely like them. Uh, but even better are the... Oh, and by the way, here is another one. This male wants to start his own colony. So this is more of the interesting activity you get with, like, Scarlet or uh, Red Tiger or Blue Battis or um, Kerala Battis. Um, there's a lot of different species of these little guys. These ones get to about an inch and a half, maybe. An inch to an inch and a half. Uh, whereas the other ones, uh, the scarlet baddest, really stay quite small. Um, also, let's see. Let me, let me not neglect you guys in the stream. Yeah, hit that like button if you want. Uh, Sherry, I'm always interested in how our fishy friends ended up being part of the same culture we are. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, happy Friday. Good Friday here in Australia. Happy eating chocolate bunnies, y'all. Yeah. Uh, I almost got about us, but their pH requirements were too low for my hard water. I can understand that, Kimberly. Um, the This water here is 7.0. Um, this is 7. Point, maybe 7.2. And I actually had to add crushed coral to their sand. Um, they can withstand more than you would think. Now, they're not going to go for 8.0 or like 400 TDS, but they, they'll put up with quite a range, um, especially if they're born in captivity. Um, pygmy sunfish occur in southern Illinois. Uh, yeah, the banded ones, yep. There are a bunch of different ones. There's one in Alabama that's, I can't remember if they call it the, like, light blue or something, but they thought it was extinct, and it's back. It's in two different lakes. You're not supposed to have it, but, um, it's really interesting. Uh, Fish Dream says, what would be ideal tank mates for a pistos? Um, I would say, uh, no shrimp, <laughs> but I think that, any neon, uh, any nano fish that you like are great. I would suggest schooling fish that are small. So like uh, these Phoenix rasboras or Harlequin rasboras, lamb chop rasboras, SB rasboras, um, erythromicrons if you want, but they hide a little bit more. They're erythromicrons back there behind the filter. Um, I, that's one that I bred a whole bunch of recently, those stripey guys down there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, these, these Phoenix Rasboras are my favorite of the ultra nano fish. Uh, they light up all sorts of different colors from this faded look. This is as faded as they get to just glowing red. If you've seen pictures and then they've got orange and peach and, uh, their black stripes get more defined and that clear area turns like a neon, color almost like this one has a little more of it so um i think those are cool i think also like the green rasboras or the blue sun danios uh they're all quick enough that they'll get away from the epistos the epistos really just need at least two areas where they feel safe where they can go with their mate and hide um another good pairing and i know the algae is annoying to people but are any of these Danios that are, like, uh, nano to small? So, like, the Tin Winnie, the Kythit, uh, the uh, Glow Light Danios, those are great. Uh, Peacock Gudgeons, they work really well. Um, Pseudomagills work well. They hang out at the top. Um Here is my uh, baby beta tank, guys, by the way. Um... Where'd they all go? They literally just hit the deck when I showed up. There's one. There's, uh, the white ones seem to almost all have red, except for one that's totally white, and one that is, uh, uh like, a, a blue, right there. She's blue and white. Uh, that one's the all-white one, right back there. 
Um, so yeah, I would recommend them. Um, this tank has, I'm working on plants in this tank right now, but also, uh, for, for, uh, your epistos, I mean, male endless. <laughs> if you want them to breed, that's fine. Also, cardinal tetras, they're a little bigger than blue or, blue or green neon tetras, but they work really well. Um, loaches, you could get a few loaches. Um, they don't seem to eat the fish, uh, the eggs as much. Um, and tetras, any of your small tetras are fine, you know. I've got these Danios too. I know they all look kind of similar, but they're, there's actually three different species that all have the dots and stripes. Uh, when you look carefully and count the number of them. They're all like inlay species. And here's some kythit ones. This and a female that just gave birth. That's a happy female. And then the female who just gave birth is right here. Looking all sunken in. Um, she she uh, spawned. And there were some babies for a while. But now they're all gone. Um, these, uh, you know, Buenos Aires Tetras. Or, um, you know... There's a lot of choices, uh, <laughs> literally thousands. Uh, marbled autosynclus are one of my favorites. Um, reticulated uh, Siamese algae eater, hands down my favorite algae eater. Uh, so yeah, let's see here. Um, Aquabolt. Oh, Aquaball says, oh, my boys look so much better. Sorry to say that. Yeah, oh, totally. Uh, these ones, like I said, their lights just came on, and they're they're not happy right now. Uh, check out the pictures I put up on the Facebook group if you want to see them colored up. They're stressed right now, especially when I poke around in there. Um, yeah, get take a look at Scarlet Battis. I definitely would. Are baddest, baddest hermaphrodites? Yeah, they definitely, some portion of the population is. There isn't good research paper officially on it yet. Um, oh, Kim, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. That is mucho appreciated. Um, also, I've encouraged people, if you do want to do the super chat, for some reason, like, YouTube's just gotten greedier and greedier. And I think they're taking now 30% plus taxes take 30% of what's left after that. And so from a $5 super chat, sometimes I'll end up with um, like, you know, it'll that'll cut it down to like $3.20 or something. And then that'll get cut down. So it's like I get like 280 or something like that, you know, for a super chat that was five bucks. So I just feel like that's wrong for you guys. Um it is for me, too, but it just feels like, did YouTube work hard enough for that money? Um, so, joining uh, Patreon or just uh, PayPaling me uh, as a friend, you know, donation or whatever, uh, at alexanderjwilliamson at gmail.com uh, is a great way to, to do that if you want to super chat. But you can super chat normally, too. I just thought I'd throw that out there and be transparent with, like, how they use the money and split up the money. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I had to temporarily put one of my bettas in with the Epistos. I have, like, 50 juveniles. They'll probably be fine. Um, I've noticed most baby cichlids, like, once they're over about half an inch, they're they're pretty tough. They, they're, they can fight off most things. Or... They're smart enough to know to go hide, especially anything from the lakes um, or the Amazon rivers that are open water, uh, because they really know there's big fish that cause them big troubles out there, and uh, they know how to hide, uh, know when their when uh, match has been met. Um... Whoa, so, all right, Aquaball says, by the way, guys, just to let you know, my freshwater smell, small goby fish killed my panda loaches. So sad. There are no BBN more. They are no, uh, in any case, well, I'm sorry about that, Aquaballs. My panda loaches all passed away, and I'm really sad about that, too. Here's my hunter in Red Point. I wish I had another mate for him. But, uh, he's pretty mean, um, so I'm gonna give him away for sure. 
Um, yeah, thanks, Kim. <laughs> uh, also, Sherry, thank you. You guys both rock. I've been chatting with you guys outside of uh, the live streams. Could you do a five-gallon Peacock Gudgeon tank? Yeah, totally. If it was just Peacock Gudgeons, definitely. I've done it before. I've done a trio of two females. Oh, this is another really underrated fish before it goes away. <laughs> is the uh, purple tetra, or sometimes it's called the powder blue tetra. Um, wet spot tropical fish carries it in Portland. Sometimes you'll see it at local fish stores. Never at the big box stores have I seen it, but it's a really cool just powder blue to lavender colored tetra that looks like an ember tetra, same body style. Uh, they get slightly bigger than ember tetras, but not much. But I really like those. Um, uh, rice fish. Can erythromicrons accept 60s like CPDs? Yeah, so erythromicrons and CPDs are actually like very closely related fish. They can interbreed and everything, and they don't like low 60s but high 60s mid 60s as long as you don't shock them into it i've definitely had them in there i had cpds outside here in seattle and they um they did fine outside also i want to point out another really cool fish which is the multi-barred border loach or sometimes it's just called the multi-banded loach these ones are full grown and they're maybe an inch and a half long but they're really fun to watch. They clean things, and then they also actively hunt and eat, and they will also school. They're a social fish. They'll play. Um, they're a little bit shy sometimes, but when they do come out, they like to chase each other and weave around, and they're just they're just kind of a cool fish. Um, as are these uh, pantherae um, and the as ascopoli, um and the Lake Inlay or Metangensis Danios that are all swimming around there. That, and there's Kyathit also. But they're hard to see unless you, you know, get a still shot of them to tell the difference. Uh, but basically, some have stripes. Uh, let's see here. Some have stripes all the way down their body and then dots up above. And others have dots by their tail fin and incomplete stripes like this one there does not have stripes that that go all the way down they have like tiger stripes so they come from the top and the bottom but they don't meet to make full bands whereas that one has full bands you see that full bands versus no full bands this one doesn't have let's see here so if they'll come back but i love all these daniels they're very dynamic they move a lot up near the top and also don't forget that endlers are a really lovely fish um, they really do move a lot. They provide a lot of color. They're really fun to breed, uh, especially if you're not sick of uh, them. You know, if you got a 40-gallon breeder and you just want to have them breed, then, yeah, that, they're a great, great, great fish to watch and see what what magical combinations they come up with. Also, pandagaras. These are another great, um, another great fish. Gara flavata or Flavata Gara, uh, and these ones, uh, this is a female, not as much color. The males get really bright orange and yellow and cream on them. Actually, maybe this might be a young male. Um, they've been spawning in this tank for me, but only like one or two of each spawn has been surviving. Uh, but yeah, they've been in this tank for a while. There's at least six or seven adults in here, and they will, when I put my hand in, especially if... Um, I don't have the camera around. So for some reason, the camera scares them. Like, they know I'm going to mess with them if the if the phone's around. And they think I'm going to feed them, even just the phone. Like, my wife can hold the phone, and they'll all come to it. Because um, they're used to the YouTube stuff. Um, but, yeah, they're a really cool fish. They'll come, and they'll uh, suck on your fingers and try to clean the oils and stuff off your, your hand, which is kind of cool some people think it's creepy and gross but i think it's cool uh and then you've also obviously got plecos they're not a nano fish but for some reason my ancestors these are this one is two years old 
and it's remained this size. Look at that. This is a pinky. So it's like tip to knuckle. Uh, very small. Some of them remain very small. I don't know if it was malnourishment or something, but uh, yeah. So those are another fun one. Um, let's see here. Pseudomagills, another great one. Or uh, Neon Dwarf Rainbow Fish, another great one. Look at this uh, nebula shrimp here. This is a gold nebula from Aquatic Arts. See all the little stars, like the Milky Way on it. It's little calcifications compared to the Malawa shrimp, which don't have that. And they have, uh, they change colors, but translucent colors. And then this is all Christmas moss and willow moss in here. Um, with all the baby fry. There's a mix of fry in there right now. Also, I decided I'm growing out salvinia more than the, um, this stuff here. This mini salvinia. More than the other stuff. Although, look at the size of this, uh, water lettuce lily pad, or whatever you want to call it. Um... Let's see here. What am I missing? What am I missing? Technically, you're not supposed to... Uh, Zion, you're not supposed to mix glow, anything glow. You're not supposed to breed, but... Um, unofficially, I say go for it and screw copyrights. Share it with our, our uh, Facebook group, please. <laughs> Mark, if your local fish store... Um, is a hundred miles away. I would use Aquatic Arts or uh, the Wet Spot or I mean I don't know. I don't like Arizona uh, as much usually. Somebody's told me they've gotten their act together, Arizona Gardens, but I've just I don't know. I've had problems with fish showing up dead a bunch of times from them. Maybe it's just the shipping from Arizona to me. Um. Am I thinking of getting Asian stone cats? I wasn't thinking about it, but I have have thought about it in the past. Um, I have thought about redoing this tank totally, giving away some of the things like my really fat uh, albino tiger barbs. They're not actually albino. These guys are... Um, they're leucistic, so they actually have blue eyes. They'd have red eyes if they were true albino. So they're kind of like those corn snakes that are yellow and peach and beige and white. Um, how would rainbow fish do with uh, green neons and ember tetras? Uh, green neons and ember tetras and um, any of the like black uh, neon tetras or um, black line tetras or uh, the blue or purple tetras. They do fine, but in here, uh, right over here, where did he go? Right there. That There's a Pseudomagill, Illuminatus Pseudomagill. Um, sometimes they go by Pasci, and he go, he gets along great with, um, or they, there's a group of them. They get along great with Ember Tetras and other Tetras. Uh, they, they spawn up in the top, like in foliage like this or that. Uh, they like yarn spawning mops for some reason. From from my experience, they like that more than they even like natural stuff to spawn in. And they will le lay five to six eggs a day, which is pretty cool, um, pretty fun to watch. Um, let's see if I can turn this on without... It's been acting up and strobing. I don't know why. I, I think something's going to give shortly on it. Oh! It didn't start strobing. Nice. Um, so in here, some Fong's Rasboras. They're a really cool one that changes color with mood. These are more of the uh, golden rice fish from India. The daisy rice fish, the blue ones, are in the other tank. Um, and then up here, we've got some pregnant Malawa shrimp. Like I said, they're a really fun one that, that, that grows quickly. Uh, more endlers. Another really cool small oddball uh, is the half beak, and they give live birth. So they actually keep babies in their long weirdo stomachs. Look at their mouth. So that that pointy jaw is their lower jaw. 
I don't know, like, if God was drunk when he designed this fish, but, yeah. So that is, that is the female there. The males have yellow, too. They've got gold on them. Uh, and we'll have one. I'm sure one will come by soon. Now, I don't know why this pregnant female shrimp is sitting near the top she really shouldn't be here's my solo male uh pandagara gara flavata he eats everything and he's super fun he's super animated he's like a puppy dog like him and panda loaches they go together so well they never eat any shrimp they never um they never eat any uh fry that i've ever seen or eggs they're just chill <laughs> They're just a chill fish. Oh, here's the male, I think. Yep, there's the male with that gold tail and the dots on it. Um, and the skinny belly. But this is as big as these guys get. There's also red line half beaks. And there's um, celebs half beaks, which have a really uh, sparkly blue eye. Or celebi, however you want to say it. Um, so... I don't know, I've got quite a few little random fish at the moment, and uh, upstairs I've got my ember tetras that were spawning, but now, ever since I've got the big old um, angelfish, they seem to do a really good job eating all the babies. I don't know, pretty good job eating all the babies. So yeah, uh, these guys hang out towards the top, the half beaks. Uh, they don't tolerate cold very well. They're from very warm water. Uh, and then also back here, I have Celestial Pearl Danios and Erythromite. Ah! Sorry, guys. Uh, my ugly face. Uh, Erythromicrons and more of the Border Loaches. So, I spawned so many Erythromicrons, uh, this last time. I've got this tank, which has probably... 30 of them in there, back in there that hide, and then I have this tank which has 29 in it from the last spawn, plus the 6 adults um, but yeah I would say if you were thinking about getting uh, Chili Rasboras get Phoenix or Mera, M-E-R-A-H Mera Rasboras they're even smaller they school tighter um, together, and they're just really interesting. Schooling is another factor that I really like in fish. Ember tetras, reed tetras are another one that school fabulously. Um, they're just great. Um, rice fish, they're not going to school well, but personality-wise, they carry their babies, uh, their eggs. Actually, is that one doing it right now? Yes, looks like it is. See that egg? She's carrying it in her fins. So let's see if she'll come back. So they carry fertilized eggs in their fins underneath their belly, one to three at a time, uh, depending on how old they are. And they just wait for it to develop, holding it underneath them. That is a ball you don't want to drop if you're a mother, I suppose. Yeah, right there. Here she is. Come on. Where did she go? Come on now, gal. I just saw you. Um, but yeah, so they carry eggs with their back fins. If I can find where the heck the one who's carrying ran off to it's probably hiding right there it's probably that one that doesn't want to come out um where'd she go she had it uh any case you can take my word for it and google it if you want to see it or just stick to my channel these are the blue daisy japanese rice fish I don't think they're originally from Japan, but they um, were basically worked on. They were bred in Japan um, specifically to uh, have blue 
color traits and to be reflective and to be seen from above the water so that they could be used in ponds. Uh, a lot of people in Japan have rain barrels with like a chain from their roof from the gutter or whatever with fresh ra rain water that falls in and then the, they'll put these guys in for for good luck and things like that um it's kind of cool but they carry eggs right there um she must have just ducked down because i saw her a few times and then she just disappeared the emerald dwarf rasboras right now are really colorful um Live streams always give everything a really bad hue, like always make everything look super dull. But um, it, you can trust that to me it's bright. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, up here, did the yeah the the baddest are coloring up a little more when I'm when they don't think I'm looking at them. <coughs> There's the female up there. And then here's another male. Part of it's the light, too. Let's get the light. Aziz, light! There we go. So remember that it's washed out on the live stream, but that is like bright magenta in real life. And electric blue and solid black. Um, and that's, that's how they roll. And they hang out at 45 degree angles, either angled down later in the day to, to, to eat stuff off the ground and angled up at, at, uh, in the mornings to eat little bugs that are falling in the water. Lavender tetra being about the size of embers. I'm in Portland. I can't wait for this lockdown to end. You know what? Um, actually, uh, Aquatic Arts is selling... Or not aquatic art, sorry guys. The wet spot, Tropicals, is still selling fish. And their store is actually open because it was uh, pet stores were ruled a, um, a necessary, well, no, a necessary uh, business, an essential business. That's the term. In here, more rainbow fish or more angel fish eggs. But I don't know. They're all molding, even though I put... Uh, well, not all, but a lot are molding. Even though they're in the blue, the blue potion, the methylene blue. Uh, and then down here again, now there's some more bettas out and about. See them? They uh, are surprisingly eating a lot of this green stringy algae, so I've just kind of let it be. Um, and they do that 45 degree angle thing too. They, they'll hang out at a weird angle. And I think they're eating something like Infusoria that lives in the algae more than the algae and it just gets stuck in their mouth when they hunt it. But you can see like there, they just start eating uh, things randomly. I mean, like like college kids that are drunk or like children. Um, I mean, I guess college kids are someone's children. Um, but yeah, so those are all really interesting fish. Obviously, bettas are interesting. They're a very small fish um in some cases like the betta splendens they're no more than two inches ever but the more interesting ones are the wild ones uh and there are like a hundred species of bettas and labyrinth fish they'll drink from the top of the water also i think um that the uh corridoras are greatly underrated fish and that they're just awesome, that they are really fun to watch in groups. That's the thing. Read up on your fish. If they're supposed to be in a group, put them in a freaking group. They'll be way cooler to watch. If you're not, if they're solitary, then don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so another interesting one is definitely, so you know the Ember Tetras, they're cool when they move in a school and then your plecos but what i wanted to show you guys are that some of pistos aren't that this is the reticulated uh algae eater and it eats blackbeard algae like there's no tomorrow that's like all it's eat i mean it'll eat other stuff but that's all it eats during the day when there's no food in see it doing it there also, um, Peclatea are great, or 
lotia, um, catfish, they're great, um, zebra plecos, and uh, gold uh, nugget plecos, and my leopard frog plecos. They don't get very big, they get about four inches really. And then these, these are small, these are opal borella. This is the female, not very colorful. The male, I don't know where he is, but they're really interesting for a smaller fish too. Um, and the last interesting little fish that I thought I'd show you that's handy in my tanks is uh, the reed tetras, but you can see how overcrowded this tank is right now, like with plants. This is all low tech. This is Hygrophila rose and vig. And then uh, Ludwigia repens. Also, look at the baby. These are another great smaller fish. They're not nano, but they're small. And that is, of course, the beautiful Crebensis, uh, the Tiniatus varieties. Uh, the pulchers get to about 5 inches, which is pretty big for a tank. But you can keep them in a 20 long, actually, uh, even though bigger's better. And these babies, um, out of all the babies they had, five have survived and are now over, probably, they're probably over an inch long. They're back in there a little ways. But those are another really fun fish to watch. Their behavior, they mate for life, they do all sorts of little dances. And then they take care of their babies so well. You can watch the mother like corral them and show them what's okay to eat and what's not okay to eat. Um, it's they're they're just really fascinating for fit you know for a fish for just a fish. Uh, and then we also have uh, the reed tetras, which I don't know where they are, but we also have corydoras. Believe it or not, there are twelve corydoras in here. And they're all just showing somewhere in the bottom of the tank. But they're great to watch um, at sunset in here since they get natural light. They'll actually go up and down, up and down, up and down. So I highly recommend uh, either Panda Corridoras, uh, Trilineatus Corridoras, um, or what, Panda? Trilineatus, or what's another good one that's really active and fun and easy to breed? Uh, I'm trying to think of its name and I can't stir by. Stir by Corydoras, those are a great one. Trilineatus are great. Um, all right, hold on, let me step outside for a second. I'm getting hot. Uh, Alex, the strobing LED generally means a failing driver. Transformer happens a lot in commercial appliances. We replaced two or three drivers over the year in our LED fixture. Thanks, Goose. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, let's see here. Yeah, I've actually I replaced the little power uh, converter box that it has, and that stopped it for a while, and then it came back. Um. I would have thought it was overstocked, but is that okay if you have a billion plants? You want to have enough room for the fish to move around. So I actually just did a bunch of trimming and there's still plants floating in a lot of those tanks you just saw. So I'll be moving that and it won't be as crowded or an issue. So yeah. Um, quick wave. Wyoming, not N-Noming? N-Wyoming? Why? Well, why not in Wyoming? I like that. Um, weird. Sorry, guys. Mind blown for a second. Uh, El Tropico. Uh, Kimberly. I got a banjo catfish from Aquatic Arts. I know nothing about them, but I'm super excited. Uh, info on those things? Not really. I mean, just make sure they get food because they can get over out competed over competed for uh, food that's something you have to worry about in a lot of bottom dwelling fish is that they don't just get over uh run by all the top feeders that that eat the food as it drifts down so what i'll usually do is i'll put some floaty flake food and then i'll get some fluval uh bug bites or something and i'll crumble it and i'll put it right in the power head or in the um 
the out outpouring outflow spout or the hang off the back filter that the waterfall part uh and that really helps it um chevy fish says i like the variety of fish you keep well thank you i mean it helps that uh, I, there's a lot of people around here and I'm able to kind of swap out fish. Like I'll breed a bunch of luminatus and I'll just get rid of them for a while. And in exchange, I'll get some baddest or whatever. So, um, most rice fish are found around Indonesia. Yes. And, uh, and Myanmar, Malaysia, that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, Let's see. Oh, substrate I use. I've used Fluval uh, Stratum. I've used EcoComplete. I don't like EcoComplete as much, but I like Fluval Stratum mixed with um, the lighter versions of ADA, uh, Aqua Design, Amano uh, soil. It's expensive, but it is really good. It holds up better in the long run. I have tested that over the course of three years you're supposed to change it out every six months to a year but that's ridiculous um they just want you to buy more it does turn into this dusty powder if you have um fish that are going through it and kind of chomping on it like geophagus or some sort of earth eaters by the way shellies are another really interesting fish so um those are a cool one if you want to do uh like a one species tank I know Lucas Bretz uh, was telling me that I never heard the end of it, so you might want to check and see if there's a video on his channel. But uh, there is... He he was putting Endlers and Guppies with uh, Shellies, with um, with them, which I thought was kind of cool. There's there's two or three species of Shellies. Oh, Mud Skippers, Aqua Balls. Uh, I'd love to see your mud skippers and the setup you have uh, if you could post to the Facebook group. I wish they'd let you post pictures to YouTube, but nevertheless, no. Uh, yes, Catapa leaves are an antifungal. Um, oh, Goose Not Maverick. I like Corydoras are Corydorable. I like that. That's, that's really ridiculous. Uh... Hope okay, uh, Cody Plant. Hope you're holding on okay uh, on the West Coast. I'm in upstate New York. It's getting crazy there. I know. I've been watching, man, just the terrible news coming out of New York. I know you guys have like 18 million people or whatever in the state, but still, it's just in three days, it's been the same amount of people as died in September 11th or something like four days. Um, it's it's sad, and it's gonna get worse. They, they think that the peak of people going to the uh, ERs and hospitals right now getting diagnosed is occurring right now with about 1% or 2% of the population infected. And that's amazing because we're all social distancing, we're all staying inside. But uh, if this had literally gone through, like uh, Boris Johnson, for instance, wanted to just let it burn uh, and, and worry about the economy... Uh, I mean, it would have been killing 5% of people because we wouldn't have had um, any medical intervention for the 5% that needed it. This lets us space it out, but it's kind of just scary because there's not really a good end game in that um, when we let people out again, people are still going to have it less, but it only takes a few cases to build up again, and then we got to go in lockdown. So... Um, we're not really getting herd immunity whatsoever at all right now. I mean, a very small portion of the population has had it, and that's why we've seen such limited death. I mean, honestly, I am amazed and impressed at all of you, at the American people, at people around the world, that we've kept the death toll down by doing what we're doing. It's extreme. It's killing the economy, I know. Um, but if if... 15,000 are dead and probably 60,000 will be dead by uh, the end of the month. Americans easily. Uh, imagine if the other 98% of America got it. Uh, Seattle is doing incredibly well. We thought we were going to get a lot worse. We're having about 50 people die a day um, as that's peaking. But our caseload has peaked. I think it's been down for four or five days now. And, uh, yeah, uh, Rob's Ray TV, hello. Um, yeah, so, 
it, we're still on lockdown and our city i mean people aren't taking it totally seriously like there are people going to the beach and playing volleyballs and stuff uh oh aquaball says i know shelly's alex there are 12 different kinds all right 12 different kinds that shows me i thought there were like two or three main kinds um yeah uh 160 million closed quarters in india yeah well there's like one point what 1.3 billion or something people there it's not gonna be good um the comet i'll have to check out the comic uh do leaves have antibiotic properties so kind of what they do is so acid for one bacteria does not like acid so acidity or extreme base but it happens quicker on the acid spectrum uh at around five four point five to five most bacteria says i'm out and there are a lot of extremophile bacteria that will live in that space but most say, screw it, I'm out. So actually, when you see that really tannic dark water in like Borneo, in like a, um, uh, oh man, it smells so good. The guy, the neighbor's smoking with the Traeger. Uh, what is he smoking? It's like hickory or applewood. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but that really tannic water is actually safe. Safe tannic water. Say that ten times fast. Safe tannic water. Safe tannic. Oh, I said say tannic quickly. Um, yeah. See, this is what I need to get next, so that I can trigger up my angelfish when they misbehave. No, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Uh, so yeah, they they do stop. Uh, they do stop bacteria in that respect, that respect. But what they really do is they foster a home for positive bacteria. It's either innocuous and doesn't do anything, like it just takes up space that other bacteria that's harmful could have, or it encourages good bacteria that is nitrifying and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Um, how do you dry mulberry leaves for your tank? Um, mulberry leaves, I just, I've always waited for fall and just let them fall. But the best way to dry leaves in my opinion is just to leave them like on a windowsill in the sun if you can if it's sunny uh or in a bathroom if you've got like a heat light one of those heat lights with a fan running uh do that for a little while or the oven on the lowest setting with like or broil and then put them on the bottom and just watch it carefully put something over like put a tray over them and then put them on a tray under that and just yeah so there's a few ways to dry leaves uh that also kind of encourages the little bugs to like scurry out uh but usually i just wait and i literally look around and i'll see like boom leaves you know uh more leaves especially in the northwest we just have so many trees with leaves like that's a big maple tree right there um and you can get garbage bags full and then i'll just um what I'll do is I'll usually flash boil them uh, or put them in the oven at like 400 degrees for like 30 seconds to a minute. And literally you can see the little mites and bugs like bail out from it um, usually. But that's what's going on. Ginger, you're finally home. Well, that means that the, the uh, stream is over. Uh, I know we didn't cover all of the little... No, you cannot put uh, all leaves from any tree in your aquarium. Uh, if there are um, any any very aromatic trees, stay away from. Especially evergreen trees. Do not put evergreen stuff in your uh, aquarium. But like juniper, that's one that I've heard people say is okay. But I've also had friends who've lost fish to that. It has a very astringent smell. And most of the time when plants have those strong smells, it's either to attract insects or animals or to make them know they're going to die if they ingest it. So oak, elm, birch, alder, poplar, um, maple, mulberry, uh, those are all great leaves. Indian almond leaves, um, palm fronds work fine. Um, uh, like peat moss works great. Um, 
certain lichens. But I have some videos on that that you can check out if, if you'd like. Um, that being said, uh, now that I'm starting to get a little bit better... Uh, thank you. Walnut leaves are poisonous to fish. So yeah, there's some things like that that it's like, don't do it. Um, but I need to go help my wife with dinner. And uh, yeah, we're on quarantine, so I have to stay on good behavior or she'll murder me. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. I'm sorry I didn't cover like every great small fish. Pea puffers, that's the last one I want to throw out there. As big personality, they act just like a big pea puffer. They're cool in little groups and all that stuff. Um, and they're also fun alone. Neighbor just got home. She's a nurse. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful evening and a um, wonderful dinner if you're not, if you haven't eaten yet. I think I'm having like a Multis, yes. Multifastiatus, yes. Adorable. Um, but let's see if I, I mean, I love Oscars too. They get huge and mean, but they're very cool um, also. And the other, there was another fish that I wanted to bring up specifically. Oh, you know, I want to do an episode on how goldfish are not really beginning fish. Like, people mistreat their goldfish just as much as people mistreat bettas. Uh, they make a lot of mess in their tank. They make a lot of bad slime coat stuff that hurts other fish. They make a ton of ammonia. They eat every plant. They, uh, a lot of them are really inbred and have health problems or they're just, like, miserable and can't even locomote around um get dropsy and stuff easily so i mean yeah a comet goldfish or something that's uh not the feeder fish usually i mean sometimes they live forever but they have uh parasites usually liquid garami is a great one british fish uh, liquid garamis are very interesting i put them very close with bettas garamis uh they are uh also sparkling garamis are another really interesting one uh, clown killies, I love them, or rocket killies. Those ones are really wonderful little fish that hang out at the top. But sparkling garamis, uh, labyrinth fish like um, licorice garamis. There's a whole bunch of licorice garamis. They like tannic water, so they, they really like the black water. Um, but they are... Um, they can drink air and so they're just kind of interesting they've in the wild they have to be smart enough to navigate through like mud puddles and hop over things so they'll hop out of the tank be careful but they also spawn in beautiful colors and things and make little nests all bettas i think make some sort of nest whether it's a bubble nest or like a little dirt nest or a leaf hammock but yeah um also uh Pea puffers, yes, they are super personable, but teeny psychopaths. Yes, I would say maybe sociopaths even. Uh, yeah, they are funny. Like, they have a pecking order. I have a video where you watch them go to sleep, and they the, the, the biggest male or toughest male sleeps highest up in the tank with the best view of everyone else, and then progressively, like, the lower males and females sleep lower in the tank a lot of times if you have a lot of leaves and then in the morning they wake up and the, the main male the alpha male gets to eat whatever he wants first and he'll just take it away from the other ones they're they're characters when i had the the baby cribs and the puffers and the baby cribs were like this big and they could take on the puffers puffers would face down adult cribs like problems like bigger than they were uh which can get them hurt um but they are a lot, they're really interesting, they're really fun. Some, sometimes combos that aren't supposed to be are really interesting combos. And I've got some videos on that also if you want to go back. I have, I have like 500 videos now, and a lot of people ask me about things, and I'm like, oh, I did a video on that. So if you're curious about something, before you ask me, maybe check and see if I did a video on it. And you probably have to listen to me ramble for a little bit about some other things. Uh, but... I will get to it eventually. It's kind of like uh, uh, that podcast, um, Stuff You Should Know. It's one of my favorites. 
or Joe Rogan or I don't know a lot of podcasts and vlog format things like I do this because I care about you guys as a community as friends um, but this is really just I'm learning I'm sharing the journey when I do live streams it's usually like what I think I'm gonna talk about uh, and then the videos that are uploaded obviously I can title specifically because I know right where they're going but yeah and for those of you who are at the very end they're like well Alex what's with the blue na fingernail polish what's not with the blue fingernail polish I was doing my wife's toenails and I was like give me some of that color and I put it on and I'm under house arrest and it, I think it makes me animate my hands a lot more like like point to things that she, she can't yell at me and say oh right, you've got uh, aqua soil wedged under your fingers and you look like you're disgusting uh, instead I just look like I'm fruity I guess I don't know um, all right guys well I am out I'm gonna enjoy the last of this Sun watch the sunset over the Olympic Mountains uh, thank you for joining thank you for staying healthy wealthy uh, and wise, maybe not wealthy, maybe not wise, maybe not healthy. Uh, but thank you for joining, uh, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.